We're back, you guys. I love technology. You just really got to laugh at yourself. Hold on one moment. Let me get this together, you guys. <laughs> All right. Listen, we are back, you guys. And I think I was on mistake number three of what to do to avoid making these mis the mistakes that new diaper cake business owners make you guys and i was talking about the third thing which is building your list how important it is if you missed that part you could go back and check out part one because listen <laughs> this is just hilarious you guys that every time i get to a key point Either it frees up or something. But anyhow, what you can do is in building your list, first you need to realize who you are serving when you're in the diaper cake business because not everybody is interested in a diaper cake. And that's why it's so important for you to do your homework, to do everything you can to find out as much as possible in the business. Because here's the thing. A lot of times you are expecting people to give you something and nobody owes you nothing, you guys. In this thing called entrepreneurship, you got to be willing to stay in the game for the long haul. You got to be willing to bite the bullet. You got to be willing to do some things that make you feel uncomfortable. And being in a diaper cake industry, mind you, a lot of people still don't think that it's a business, legit business. But I can tell you from experience, it's a legit business and it's very lucrative and you can have fun, you guys, doing this type of business. So the fourth thing mistake that all new um, diaper cake business owners make is they don't invest in their skills, meaning they think that once they have watched a few YouTube videos and they get their little diaper cake method, simple method down, they think they're good to go. But I'm telling you from experience, you got to constantly work. And I wish I had a picture on my very, I've been trying to research you guys all weekend to show you guys what my very first diaper cake looked like. Oh, it looks sick, you guys. It looked, <laughs> it was a hurt mess, but you got to start somewhere. <laughs> and <laughs> I never forget, I went to show it to my then husband. He was like, oh no, Tersa, you may want to keep working on that one because it looked really sad, you guys, but I was so determined. And so you have to keep perfecting and keep advancing in your knowledge, learning new ways to do diaper cakes. Because if you stay stuck in the old method and all of that, you're going to get left behind. And people are going to be coming out with new techniques and new diaper cake styles and things. And you still going to be doing the same old one and you're going to get left behind. So you got to always be willing to invest in your skills, whether that is a course, whether that is taking um, classes, you got to keep practicing you guys y'all know the saying practice makes perfect well you got to keep perfecting your craft with anything just like if you wanted to run the olympics you ain't gonna go out there and talk about you finna run the olympics and you ain't practice you ain't been eating right you ain't been working out that's gonna be a hot raggedy mess so y'all understand what i'm saying you got to perfect your skill perfect your craft and don't be afraid to invest in yourself when you want to learn something what better way to learn from somebody who's already been there, done that? That will save you guys a lot of headache. It will save you a lot of pain, a lot of money. Because when I tell y'all, your girl over here lost a lot of money when I first started out. Because when you don't know, you just don't know. And being that I was so hungry, I was so hungry to learn. I was very gullible. Because every time I saw somebody, a big guru or somebody that I admire, and they came out with this program or they had this conference, guess who was there? Your girl was trying to be there like yesterday because I was hungry. Y'all know the saying by one of my favorite mentors, uh, motivational speakers, Les Brown. You know, he he was real hot back in the day, but he always used to say, you got to be hungry. And when I tell you, your girl was hungry, I'm, I'm going to tell you all a little story. <laughs> One year, I was so determined, you guys. I was investing money left and right. I was so determined to get to this one conference, you guys. I got there. But guess what? I spent my first night in a new city where I didn't know anybody. I slept in a stinking ass 
bathroom stall because I didn't have a ride to get to the hotel. Wouldn't nobody come pick me up. The cab fare was like $25. Listen to you. When I tell you I spent my last to go to this conference, I spent my last, like my parents, my mom, them gave me their last. I think my ticket was $333. That was, I didn't have money for food. I didn't have money for taxi cab. And the only good thing that saved me, you guys, I was working part-time at the Family Dollar and my check was, my deposit for my first paycheck was going to come that Friday. But mind you, the conference started that Wednesday. So I didn't have no money, you guys. Do y'all hear me? I didn't have no money, you guys, for the first two days. So one of my girls that I was with, when we were sharing a room, we all went in together. This how this how sad this story is. Like, cap. I mean, everything was so expensive. Then we get to the conference. We didn't get what we was promised. It, it was almost like it was a slap in the face because not only did I end up sleeping in a stinking airport hotel i mean bathroom it was stinky I'm, I'm clutching my pearls because i don't know nobody i'm scared to sleep out there in the lobby because i don't want to go to sleep with my purse right here my phone had died it was just a the trip was just a a really big it was a bummer but the only thing about it was i got a chance to meet my very um uh, one of my favorite mentors, Les Brown. That was like the only best thing that came out of this trip because I was so hungry, you guys, to get to this conference. But looking back on it, never again will I put myself in that type of position. But when you knew and you hungry, you, you don't know a lot. It's very easy for people to uh, be taken advantage of when you're a newbie because you're hungry. You want to learn stuff and you don't know who to trust. You're looking at all the shiny objects on, on Facebook and Instagram and they're showing you they making six figures. Here's what I want you to understand. Don't believe the hype of all these income reports and stuff like that, what you see on Facebook and all that. Don't allow that stuff to make you so depressed that you go out and do something that you regret because nine times out of 10, People show you what they want you to see on social media. And a lot of times these people post in their income reports and all that stuff. They're showing you what was came, what came in, but they're not showing you all of the expenses that they had. So they could have just made $300 and yeah, the income report showing that they made $20,000. But when you add up all the expenses that they have to pay out, they may have $500 left, but they ain't showing you that. So you got to be very careful when you're starting out. You want to check people's record. I tell people, Google me. You'll find all kinds of stuff. Some of it a bunch of bull crap, but some of it is worth you reading because I've been around in the gang a long time and I've learned a lot from the mistakes that I made. And that's why I'm sharing them with you don't make the same mistakes I made because this will save you a, a, a lot of money and a lot of whatever in the long run if you follow these steps. And then the next thing that I see a lot of new diaper cake business owners make is um, they're only selling on saturated sites like eBay. I know they say when you first get started, if you don't want to just spend money and get a full-blown website, start on Etsy. Because I, I tell people that. If you don't want to just necessarily start with a full-blown website. But here's the downfall of that. Like I said, it's very saturated. And Etsy is oversaturated with diaper cakes and all types of handmade stuff. See, back in the day, Etsy used to just be a handmade site, but now you can sell anything on Etsy. And so when you are new and you're going trying to sell things on sites that have been around for years and have people that have been dominating the platform for years, it's going to make it really hard for you to come in as a newbie and make some money. So that's why I say eliminate the middleman. That's what I call them. Eliminate the middleman and then just go straight to your website. At least, you know, when you're at your website, you're not competing with everybody. You're only showcasing your beautiful diaper cakes. When you're on your social media platforms, you're showcasing your beautiful diaper cakes. You're not running into like everybody is at the same time. Like you see like little puppies when they're trying to get water, all of them hollering in together. 
that's what it feels like if you're starting on Etsy because a lot of times there are so much competition on Etsy, you find yourself lowballing your prices, which you're not making money. You end up shortchanging yourself. And so at the end, you have to understand sometimes you have to bite the bullet and go ahead and invest in a WordPress um, site, or you can start a Shopify site. But whatever you do, if you're starting with the WordPress site, make sure you get your hosting through SiteGround. One of the best um, hosting companies I've dealt with. I've been through a lot of hosting companies and by far the last several, couple of years I've been with SiteGround. I haven't had any problems whatsoever. Um, even with my site being hacked a few years before, before I even got with SiteGround, but I was with, I think, HostGator, very poor customer service. And that's just my experience, but I'm saying from my experience, I recommend you get your own website. That way you have more control over your money. You have more control over how much you make because it's your website. It's your hub. Like I said, when you're on social media, you're introducing yourself to the public. You're getting people to know you. But when they want to learn more about them, about you, they need you to direct them to your site. That's why it's so important for you to have your own site because they, you need an about me page so people can learn more about you. Have a free offer. That is something I talk about in the Diaper Cake Business Course because if you don't have a list, you guys, you can't make money. I don't care how many people, you can have thousands of followers on Facebook. But if none of them people are on your list and social media go out of business tomorrow, you going bankrupt just along with them. You going out of business because you're putting too much focus and attention on platforms that you don't own, that you don't have any control over. They can do whatever they want to do with YouTube. I mean, they can do whatever they want to do with Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn. Those are not your platform. So you can't really Put all your focus and attention on putting all your merchandise on Facebook in the marketplace. You need to have your own website, you guys. And then the next mistake that I see a lot of new diaper cake business owners make is you are pricing your diaper cakes based off of, hold on, you guys, my phone is, hold on. You are pricing your diaper cakes off of what you see other people doing. That is the biggest mistake that I ever made because you don't know the behind the scenes. You don't know if they're getting their stuff wholesale. You don't know if they are getting their stuff on sale, but you're going off of what their price. You will never know the behind the scenes because guess what? They're not going to tell you. And I'm telling you from experience, when I started, you guys, it's a wonder I didn't give up because I was reaching out to all types of people, like people in my industry, competitors, people that were the top brands in, in the diaper cake industry, in the gift business industry. And I was coming up just frustrated because I would get answers like, oh, I'm so happy that you decided to start your own diaper cake business, but I can't help you with that. Or I had one email to say, well, I appreciate you reaching out to me, but I don't share that with other people. That's my that's how I make my money. And I'm saying to myself, it's enough money for all of us to get a piece of the pie. It's enough success for all of us to get some of the, you know, so it wasn't really no reason. That's why when people come to me for coaching, I don't sugarcoat nothing. I tell you the honest God truth because nobody sugarcoated anything to me. Either I learned the hard way or I just had to research on my own until I actually found somebody that was willing to coach me and walk me through how to grow in this business. Because if you're solely depending on business just from your website alone, you're not going to get very far in the diaper cake business because it's going to take a whole lot more from just the sales that you get from your website. You got to learn how to um, advance and um, broaden your horizon in the business. And, and that's the thing. I taught, it's a whole module in the diaper cake business course on how you get corporate contracts. Cause that's where you're going to get your money from. You're not going to get your money from two or three sales here and there from the website. One or two people reach out to you on Facebook. When you want to grow and scale your business, you need those contracts. That's residual income coming in every month. And you're not going to make that just 
hoping somebody finds your website. You're not going to make it posting 50 million times a day on social media. Those corporate contracts is what's going to really solidify your business and take it to the next level. And so the next mistake that I see a lot of new diaper cake business owners make is they don't ask for help. They just figure, you know, they don't want to invest in themselves, so they don't ask for help. I'm telling you guys, I am the queen of asking. If it's something I don't understand, you may tell me a no 50 million times, but I'm going to keep asking till somebody tell me something. Because when you're in this type of business, you got to be very careful of how you orchestrate your business structure. Because at the end, you know, when you're dealing with diapers and you're dealing with newborns, newborn skin is very sensitive. So if you are not careful with where you design your diaper cakes and all that, you can have a big lawsuit on your hand. And if your business structure is not set up right, they are coming after your personal assets, like your house, your car things that you worked hard for. These are things that you really have to put in place in the beginning days, because when your company starts to grow and you start to build your clientele up, you may need to hire somebody to keep up with the demand. You may need to um, outsource some things. You can't do that. And here's, here's the thing. Companies are not going to work with you because you say you're in business. They need documentations. They're going to ask you for a lot of paperwork. They're going to ask you if your business incorporate. Because if you're not incorporate, don't even think about trying to go uh, talk to various corporations and companies and boutiques and all. They're not going to hear. They're going to turn you down and put your little letter or email or whatever you typed up. They're going to put it in the file or put it in the trash. Because you know why? They need to know that if something happened, that they are... Um, that they backed up, meaning that they have, um, I'm trying to put this in the word. If somebody came after you to sue you, all the um, suing wouldn't be on that corporation because you are incorporated. So that, that kind of, I'm trying, I can't get my words out. That backs you up or that protects you. That's what I'm trying to say. It protects you from people because people can sue you over anything, you guys. And I'm telling you, in a business like the diaper cake business, people, I've seen some horror things happen in this industry. And you don't want to be caught up in a bunch of foolishness, you guys. So trying to cut corners and trying to do things the free way and all that, that's not going to cut it if you're really trying to do this thing legitimately. So where you're trying to cut corners, you're going to end up paying that money down the road because you done made a big boo-boo. And I'm telling you guys from experience because I could have saved myself a lot of money. But because I was so hard-headed, you guys, I didn't want to invest. I didn't want, I always look for a free way out. I always Google or YouTube. My philosophy was if I can't find it on Google or YouTube, then I just don't need to know it. That's the wrong attitude to have if you're trying to be successful in business. That goes for any business. And so these are the things that you need to do and avoid doing so that you can have success for the long haul. And when I tell you guys, I know you're excited. I'm excited for you. I can't wait to hear all of your success stories telling me, LaTursa, I had this much and I got a contract with this. I can't wait to hear them stories because I know they're coming. Because my philosophy is it's enough success for all of us to get to the top. I always say, when you make it to the top, you reach back and help somebody else. And that's what my mission is all about, helping moms live their best life, whether that's helping you find a work at home job, whether that's helping you start your diaper cake business, whether that's helping you get your mindset right, helping you to live your best life, whatever the case may be, this is where I come to give back, to let you know that you're not by yourself. I've been there, done that. These are the steps that you need to take. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to avoid. That's what I do. I don't have fear of somebody outshining me or outdoing me. Because listen, nobody can dim my light. My light is too bright to be dim. And that's why I love when people come to me and ask me how to start the diaper cake business. Because I've been there and I've done that. You know, I, I, I think I got the t-shirt in that. Still got a few bruises from it too, but 
These are the things that you need to must to avoid. And I'm going to recap because I know this is part two of it because my other video, it kind of did its own thing. It cut off on me. But the first mistake you need to avoid is don't you don't require a, a, a deposit. When you're in this diaper cake business, you need to put that in your terms and conditions. There is a deposit. If your order is over a hundred dollars, you need a deposit up front. I even go so far as to say if it's $60, require them to pay a 50% deposit down. That way, that's assurance that you know what? If they pay their money, they don't come back and get the rest when the diaper cake is available. And another thing that you don't want to do, don't build and make a lot of cakes, just have them sitting up. I don't like that. That's not fresh to me. I like my cakes made fresh to order. So if I got a diaper cake sale today, guess what? That diaper cake is going to be designed that day. It ain't something that I got up in a warehouse and storage and all of that. And we talk a lot about more about wholesaling and all that stuff in the diaper cake business course. But what I'm saying to you is when you're first starting out, your sales are going to be here and there. They're going to be like this week you be balling and next week you hear crickets. But make your diaper cakes fresh and take your time with making your because this is your brand. You don't want to give a first impression. This just sloppy. Going back to my very first diaper cake, if I had to try to sell that, it wouldn't have never sold because it was special. When I tell you my diaper cakes when I first started was just special and it needed a lot of prayer. But that's why you keep practicing because you want to put your best foot forward. You want to do everything with excellence. Take your time and craft your cakes right because in the end, your clients that they're the new moms or whoever purchased, they're going to be giving you testimonies and you don't want nobody to say, oh, I ain't buying Michelle's diaper cake because girl, it was tacky. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen those diaper cake that rolled up like the candle with the rubber band? That's a waste, a complete waste of time. That's a waste of money and everything because the new mom ain't got time to be out rolling no 50, 60 something doggone diapers. Really? I mean, she got her hands full with the new baby. So that's why I started creating the spiral boutique diaper cakes. I don't like that candle roll stuff because that's just wasting the diapers in and messing them up. Only thing they can do is keep that up on the mantle and show it off for something cute. But as far as like you coming to try to sell something that the new mom can actually use, Take your time and do that. Don't rush through it. I don't care if you got 50 orders coming in. You need to hire you some help and make sure this is another mistake. Don't just be hiring anybody to help you do diaper cakes because, you know, everybody ain't clean. And then you're dealing with diapers. And then every you need to have some people on your team that have the same mission, believe the same way, has the same type of work ethics as you. Because when they design them diaper cakes, it's a reflection of you because your name tag is going on there. So if I hired five people to help me make diaper cakes, you best believe I'm going to be interviewing and seeing their work because this is a reflection of me and my brand that I worked hard for. So you got to keep all that stuff in mind. And then the third, the second mistake was all you're doing on social media is wasting time by posting, by this, by that. People don't know you. When you first start out, people don't know you. They don't care. People want to know what's in it for them. Not every time you talk to them, I have a conversation with this. You want to buy my diaper cake or you want to buy my new diaper cake? They see your diaper cakes. If they want one, they'll contact you. Your job is to educate and give them the benefits of the diaper cake. Why should a new mom purchase a diaper cake? Why should you give the new mom? You know, people want to be educated, not always sold to. And then the third mistake was not building a list. Y'all know the saying, the money is in the list. If you are not building your list, you need to start right now. You need to just cut this audio off, video off. Go right now, get you an account with ConvertKit, which I show you how to do a lot of in the uh, diaper cake business course. But build your list is where you're going to begin to make your money. The customers that have bought from you previously, if you just let people buy from you and you don't have a way for them to fill in their email and name so you can keep in contact with them. You're just a one hit wonder. Like they just bought the diaper cake when they needed it and that's it. You'll never see them again. But if you have a way to build your list, get them on your list. So when you do come out with a promotion or you do come out with a sale or something new, 
they'll be the first to know. And since they've already bought from you in the past, they'll be more prone to buy from you or send somebody else to you. I got a lot of repeat customer sales. I had a lot of referrals because people knew that's because that was my name. Latursa, that's the diaper cake girl. Or oh, that's the diaper cake lady. That's what my name was <laughs> when I first started out because that's what people knew me for. So you want to build your brand so that people, when they say your name, it's good stuff. Now, mind you, on internet, you know, you're going to have people to say stuff. People say some mean stuff. That comes with the territory. But try not to take that to your heart because that's another mistake that newbies make because I did it. If people wasn't liking my cakes or people wasn't commenting, I thought it was something wrong with me. Or if people didn't like my post or people didn't respond to me, I thought it was something wrong with me. But that's not the case, you guys. It's just people see you and they follow you. They might not say nothing. And this is what I really learned. People can secretly admire you and want to be like you, but because they in certain cliques and those people don't care for you, they can't make it known that they really admire you and adore you. So you got to take the good, you guys, with the bad. And you got to, as my daddy used to tell me, you got to build some tough skin, baby, because people will spit, chew you up and spit you out, especially when you put yourself out here on thing like the internet. See, back in the day when I was a young girl, we didn't have to worry about people putting stuff on and online and all that. But now you can make or break somebody by the internet. That's why I say you got to really build your tough skin, toughness up. Because in this industry, in, in business period with the online world, people can say some mean stuff behind the stream. And if you're not careful, you get all caught up in there and get in your feelings and stop the very thing that God wants to use to bless you to live an abundant life, but because you got a negative conversation or somebody said something negative in the comments, you took it to heart. You can't take it to heart. And that's easier said than done, you guys, because <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. It's easier said than done because when you're going through it, it doesn't really feel good. People say all these nasty things about you, but it comes with the territory and it really is nothing you can do about it because people have their freedom of speech. People have their right to say whatever they want to say, but it's up to you how you respond to it. And then the next mistake that I see a lot of newbies make was they're not investing in their skills, meaning they're they're not continuously practicing on their diaper cakes. In order for your cakes to get better and better, you got to keep working at it. You got to take some time. And here's one tip that I'll share with you guys. I used to buy off-brand diapers and have a, um, you know how you have dummies where you have different wigs on and you want to do their hair? I had a play diaper cake and that was where I test out different designs, different things. And then if I like it, that was my practice diaper cake, but it was cute enough to, I prop it up and set it. I prop it up and take a picture of it and put it on the website if I like it. But if I didn't, I take it down all over and play. That's what you would catch me doing on the weekends when the kids were out with daddy or something like that or anything like that. I'd be in the office playing around with diapers, playing around with diaper cake, doing different things, looking at um, I invested in a coaching program that had a, a DIY section. And, you know, I'm a crafty girl, so I could spend hours and hours in my office just crafting stuff. So those are the things that you got to do to keep investing in yourself, keep practicing and keep perfecting your skill. Because if not, people will pass you. And while you're still doing point A diaper cakes, everybody else will be on point C and you still be trying to figure it out. So, and then the next one was you're only selling, you only selling on saturated sites like Etsy, um, eBay, all of those sites. Those sites are great to get started on, but there's not that's not your permanent spot. And that is why I always recommend you have your own website, whether that's a Shopify store or just a, a regular website. Because at the end of the day, you're not competing with all those people that are already dominating that space on Etsy or eBay. You have your own website. So when they come to your site, they're coming to see your diaper cakes. And that's why it's so important for you to keep perfecting your skills. Because if you look at my beginning 
diaper cakes. And then you look at the ones that I ended my business with, you'd be like, oh my God, Latosha, you improved so much. And that's only because I was practicing. I constantly was working on my craft. And then the next mistake that I talked about was you pricing your diaper cakes based off what you see other people doing. That's the biggest mistake you can make because you'll never know the behind the scenes. You'll never know how they're coming up with their price because number one, they're not going to tell you. Number two, you can guess all day, but you got to learn how to price your diaper cakes. That's what anything, price your products, your services. You got to know what your time is worth. And I tell people all the time, I used to have people get on my nerves. You wanted me to give them a hookup. You wanted them to, me to give them something for free. And I'm like, when you're making handmade gifts, sometimes when you just begin, it takes you hours to do a one dog on diaper cake because you're trying to get it right. But the more you get better at it, it gets easier and easier. But you got to factor in your time. That's all for saying if I was doing a, cro a crochet blanket. It takes hours to do a damn crochet blanket because when I learn how to crochet, y'all, I'm still trying to finish the pink and green Afghan. I ain't finished it today. That's been three years ago. But I'm just saying, for handmade gifts, it takes time, you guys. And you got to factor that in. Otherwise, you're going to shortchange yourself. You got to add up everything that you use to create this diaper cake. And if you do not... When I tell you, if you do not add up everything, you shortchange yourself and you'll never make a profit like that because you're lowballing yourself. And then the last and final mistake that I shared with you guys was not asking for help. If you don't know something, don't sit there and make a fool of yourself. Don't sit there and waste all that money. If you don't know, ask somebody before you start spending money because it could be a way for you to save, but you too... You, you got your pride and your ego get in the way and you don't want to ask for help. That's what that's what growing and getting to the next level in any business, you got to ask for help. Nobody gets to the top by themselves, you guys. I don't care how great you are. I don't care how good your business is. When you want to scale up and move to the next level, you're going to have to ask for some help. That's not saying you weak. That's not saying you slow, don't know nothing. Every great person, Oprah, Les Brown, Michelle Obama, Barack, all them great people, amazing people, they ask for help. They got a team of people around them that do certain things. You got to learn how to ask for help. If you're not good in a certain thing in your business, learn to outsource and ask for help. That's how you grow. You do what you do is best, which is crafting your beautiful diaper cakes, but you outsource your admin stuff. You outsource customer relations and all that stuff when you're able to. Now, when you're just starting out, it's going to be a one woman show pretty much, but you still got to learn how to ask for help. When you're able to invest, invest and don't let anybody make you feel bad for not wanting to not being able to invest on the level they think you are. If you can only invest in a $37 course, invest in that course and be just as proud. And when you can invest more, you do that. But don't let anybody else make you feel guilty because the only thing you can afford is a $97 course. Okay, get that $97 course, go over that course. And that's one thing I like about courses. You always have access to them. Go over that course as many times as you need. And by you buying the course, you have access to the coach. So if you have a question, ask questions. You've already paid for it. That's what it's there for. Don't allow people to get in your head and make you feel like because you're not investing thousands. And I, and I, I used to hear this all the time. If you're really serious about your business, why are you still at your nine to five? Boo, I'm still at my nine to five because I keep a roof over my head. Uh, boo, I'm still in my nine to five because it put food on the table. Uh, boo, I'm still at this nine to five because it's helping my livelihood. Boo, my business can't sustain me now, so I need another source of income. Don't let people trip you up into thinking if you want it bad enough, you'll do what it has to take, and then you'll be out there homeless somewhere. Because I've seen some stuff, 
in my day, you guys. I know I be sounding like I'm crazy, but I'm telling y'all the truth. People will tell you a bunch of foolishness so you can buy into their products and service. You making them rich, but you still sitting over there in the corner and ain't got two dollars or two nickels to rub together. But you wondering what they doing. You know what they doing? They pimping you to get your money and you still giving them money, but you ain't doing nothing in your business. You giving all them money, feeding in their dreams because that's what you're doing. You buying into their dream and your dream just falling by the wayside. So hear me when I say, you guys, take heed to what I said in this video. I know I, I'm very goofy, silly, but I mean well, you guys. I'm telling you guys the truth. I wouldn't lie to you guys. There are some things to be done with the diaper cake business, honey. You looking at a crafty mama over here. I love, I could set up and watch craft movie, craft videos all day long on YouTube. Do you hear me? I could set up and watch stuff that's related to business all day long because I'm always hungry to keep growing. I'm always hungry for knowledge. And when you continue to have that mentality that you want to keep growing and you don't know everything, that's how you grow. It's when you get in that way where you think you know everything, where you stop growing. Because the minute you stop learning and stop having an open mind to learn something, because nobody knows everything. The minute you get in that mentality where you know everything and you're unteachable, I, I can tell you everybody that I've coached with the good and the bad, one thing they would never say about Latursa Blakely is she's a lazy person. Because I be on it before the phone call is over with. I'm already working on the assignment. Like, you give me an assignment, I'm going to work on that thing. Even if I have to be up to 2 or 3 o'clock, I'm going to get it done. And here's my advice. When you're taking courses or you're investing in a program, go to the stuff that you need. You ain't got to go through all the little basic stuff. That's how you be on a course forever and you ain't implement nothing. This is how you take a course the successful way. Find the stuff that you need answers to and go to that module and learn it and then implement. Don't just take the course and, and be proud because you went through every module. I ain't got time to do all that. Nine times out of 10, when I take a course or I'm investing in a program, it's something that I need an answer to. When I get the answer or I find out where the answer is in the module, that's where I go and start. I don't start at the beginning because a lot of times beginning is just basic stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching y'all something. If y'all just have an open mind, when you're investing in courses, even if you start the diaper cake business course today, you already know how to make a diaper cake. So you can skip those modules. But when you get into how to make money, how to upscale, that's where you trying to go. Skip to that. You got the course forever, but right now you want to find something that you can take action on. Take that, take action, get your results, come back and see if there's something else you want to know. You see how that worked? I hope I made sense today, but listen, I'm going to let you go because I know some of you are hungry. You want to get your lunch and get you some lemonade and tuna sandwich and all that good stuff. But listen, I have a new video come out every week, Tuesday and Thursday. Today I got on here because I had to share some stuff with you. Something was on my heart. But anyway, I drop new videos every week, you guys. If you are interested in things like entrepreneurship, if you're interested in being the best woman that you can be, self-care, personal hygiene, all that stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Tell a friend about it. Tell a sister friend about it. Tell your girls about me because somebody needs to hear this information. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Like this video, share this video because it does help my channel algorithm. Again, you can find the um, diaper cake business course at the link in the description and the chat. I got it pinned at the top. Make sure you subscribe, you guys. Remember, you are absolutely enough. And everything that you need, it's already in the inside of you. So God bless you guys. You are so welcome, Tasha. Thank you so much for joining. Make sure you guys share this with a friend. Make sure you grab the course, you guys. Um, the link is in the description. I love you guys. Have a great day. Ooh.